All right. Hello. Sometimes I make a change in my life that literally equates to like 20 or 30% increased happiness overall. And I wanted to share one of those with you today. This is a technique that I'm using over the past three weeks-ish to a month that I've actually finally successfully stopped consuming social media, particularly toxic social media that has bothered me a lot. I am a victim of Twitter and Reddit. I think everything gets someone. I know people that scroll through Instagram endlessly, like I've never had that problem. But the two big ones that I have is one on Twitter. When I am either on my phone, it's just too easy, or I'm on a website, or I want to s distract myself from work for several minutes and scroll through and see what people are doing. I go to Twitter, and then I start comparing myself to people that are on Twitter, that are sharing their best moments, even though I know rationally that's not reflective of their life I like at all the time, and they're just posting their best moments. I compare myself to their success. And I noticed what a mental drain it was on me that added up in weird ways, it affected my productivity, affected my view of myself, and just was not good. You don't really know what you're getting until you're off this type of stuff. And I didn't realize what a negative impact that had on me. The second one was Reddit, which for me wasn't so much a negative, but just more of like a time waster. I did a mental exercise where I like went through and tried to think about the posts that I had seen. And I was thinking, what value did I get? Can I even remember the posts, number one? And if I can remember them, what value did I get out of these posts, if anything at all? And I could rarely ever come back with even a thread that I had remembered consuming a day later, much less like something that I got a value out of. It did happen occasionally where I would read something that was useful, but there are so many better mediums for it where you can just directly read a book or do anything productive other than that. So uh, I, I found myself comparing myself a lot. I, I've looked a lot into the negatives of social media, and I, I've realized that it's pretty much objectively bad for both us as and individuals and society as a whole, most likely. And you can look into things like the social network is great video, uh, great film on Netflix about this. All these studies that are coming out of universities that are showing that particularly in our age group, this, uh, the social media craze is just not good. So if you're watching this video this far, you've probably identified with me and you're also kind of looking for a way out. And I can never find one. I tried everything. I, I tried a huge amount of things. And what I found was a combination of behavioral changes that led me to success. And this is not clickbait. I really did quit. And I've had more success with this than I ever had before trying to do this. So I'm going to share all the stuff that I do today that just keeps me off of social media. And the one really big thing I did that actually fixed it, I think, out of everything. Okay, so the first thing you have to do about behaviors is you have to make it very difficult to actually do. So if I take my phone, what I did first was I moved all of my social media into a, I have to, I have to actually thumb over on my phone about like five or six pages, as far as it can go. And you'll see a tiny folder here, which is called addiction on, uh, right there. And if I click that, that has Instagram, Discord, Reddit, and Twitter. Now you might say, well, why not just delete these apps from your phone? The reason is because very often I have to check messages for these for work. These are what sucks about social media is that it's increasingly not just becoming a complete entertainment, but I also get DMs. I also get messages. All of my work is also done on Discord. So it makes it doubly hard. So it makes it, I make it very difficult for me to access. And that's the first thing that I do that uh, just gives me that mental check to like scroll through and make it a little bit more difficult on my phone. It's that's not enough on its own, though. So I'm going to share with you a couple of other things. Just switch over here. So I use a couple of apps that I really love. I want to share with you. The first one is an app called Momentum, which is an extremely simple app where if I click a new tab, it just pulls up a blank screen. You can type what your focus is for today. Which will then appear for the rest of the day. It can also be a small task list. And it's just a little motivational thing. What happens with Google Chrome and Firefox is that they pull up tabs that are recently used. And if you read Reddit or Twitter a lot, 
any of the websites that you go to will be the first websites that appear there and you will click on them automatically. So you might be opening up a new tab to do something productive and you immediately get sidetracked into something because of the way that Chrome and, and Firefox work. So this is a totally free extension that I have used and it's just amazing. It's great. And I highly recommend it. It's called Momentum. The second totally free extension that I use is a one called Stay Focused. And what Stay Focused is, is it blocks certain websites and it has a ton of customization features. How I use it is I will only allow certain websites to be active for XYZ minutes per day, usually 10 to 15 minutes. So if I, I I'm going to say that I failed to have success with this program until I did the big thing that I'm going to tell you in a minute, but it has been helpful. What you can do is you can change settings so that at certain times or at certain days, you can block certain websites and you can do it so that you can only change these settings by typing a prompt. And I typed out this prompt, which is like, hey, it's like me talking to myself, like, hey, you know what you're doing right now. You're changing this prompt so that you can get more time on this website that's going to waste time. Are you sure you want to do this? And I, you can actually type this out. You'll have to type like a confirmation of what it says to be able to change the settings. That worked pretty well for me. I, I like that a lot. So Stay Focused is the second app that I'm using to sort of like, kind of just like check my, my productivity out. But the main thing that I did and uh, that I can't believe worked actually was what I'm about to tell you now. So I realized that all the stuff that I just told you is great if, but what will happen is you will quit social media with these techniques and then you'll have a void of time that you don't know how to fill. And if you don't fill that with something productive, I think you always just go back into social media, no matter how good your behavior stoppers are. And this was the problem that I had was like, I devoted a huge amount of time to Twitter and Reddit, like more than you'd think hours per day, actually, when you add it all up and th those hours of the day need to go somewhere and they're not going to, don't be, uh, don't be naive and think that all of that time is going to just go into work automatically. It's not like you're just not that kind of productive human being. And I, I'm not either. So I, I was like racking my brain. I'm like, what can I do that is productive and adds value, but is something that I truly enjoy. And then I came up with the idea. that's like, you know, I have read a ton of nonfiction self-improvement books and I love reading non nonfiction self-improvement books, but I can't replace the time with those nonfiction books because I, I think you just burn out reading like nonfiction requires like your attention and learning and you just need to spend a lot of time like consuming, especially self-improvement or business oriented, any kind of skill set oriented stuff. So I realized that uh, I would have to do something that I really loved if I wanted to change this behavior. And then I thought, you know, I've always loved reading fantasy books. What if I made it extremely easy? And I could just click on something and I made it easy everywhere I went. So I installed Kindle Cloud Reader on one click of a button on my hotbar on Google Chrome. And then on my phone, I also have one click of a button on my front page where I can easily just access instantaneously my books. So here you go. Bam. Right. And then I'm in my book. And what I decided to read was I decided to read Warhammer Fantasy <laughs> because I love lore and I love fantasy books. And so this is something that I would truly enjoy. And I knew that instead of the social media, which always left that negative taste in my mouth, pretty much all, almost always, I, you never like walk away from Twitter or Reddit and you're like, wow, that was a great experience. I'm so glad that I grew from that <laughs> or that never happened to me. So I wanted to walk away from something where I was like excited and I wanted to go back and do more and fantasy books, really great fantasy books. If you've ever read them, have that habit. Uh, but for, for you, I'd encourage whatever just is instantly accessible and uh, just like excites you like, like that and, and, and fires you up. But this had a, a side effect that I didn't anticipate that I think really solved the problem. And that was that, uh, so let's look at the behavior, right? Previously, I'd be at work. I would just go to twitter.com when I'm working on a project or something. I just, my brain, ADHD, just distract, bam, twitter.com. And now I'm scrolling through things. Well, the, once I'm on that website, that company has spent a bazillion dollars trying to figure out how to keep me there. So there's all these hooks. There's all these scroll techniques. There's all these next steps and everything. Same with uh, Reddit, right? They're 
business model is to keep you on that website as long as possible so that you view more ads. But reading is not like that. So what I didn't anticipate was all of the hooks went away. When I started reading, and I just would click one button, go reading, what I would do is I would read for five, 10 minutes, and then I'd be like, you know what? I'm good. I can go back to work. I'm excited to come back and read more later, but I don't have to read for hours and hours at a time because the hooks that, that just they get you don't exist in that, in that format. They, they, it's a good story, and you might want to come back, but you're not building those same addictive profiles that you would be building. So I have been amazed at how good this has been. Not only has it increased my vocabulary, made me excited to do something, it's also removed all the negative impetus from social media, and it's just been a universal huge positive in my life that I would wanted to share with you. Uh, although it is different from my normal talks, I thought it was important enough because it literally has increased my happiness by something like, I'd say two or three out of every 10 minutes per day are better because I do not consume social media. And this is coming from a person whose job is very closely oriented to social media. So I am especially apt to compare myself to it, but I think that's even worse for people that are outside of the field. So I hope this benefits you. I really do. Uh, use the productivity apps that I recommended if this seems like something that would help, but replace this core activity with something that really you love. And this could be something like, I've always wanted to learn another language and I really love learning another language. Install Duolingo where you can just tap it once and do a lesson and, and try it. But I, what I learned was you have to replace that time with something else positive immediately. That was the key that I was missing. And I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I listened to a lot of other people talk about how they tried to do this. And, and they all had various techniques and stuff. A lot like what I recommended in the beginning of the video. But none of it worked in the way that replacing it with a positive behavior actually worked. And now I'm confident going forward can actually get me out of this endless time vampire. <laughs> so if this works for you, leave a comment in the section down below and I'll read it. Thank you very much for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel if you want more talks like this and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.